Hey everyone, I'm back with another quick Unity tutorial this time. It was supposed to be part of my previous video, but I figured I would split it out and dedicate it to its own separate one. And uh, it's a simple concept related to one of the built-in math functions in the Unity math library. And uh, since I have been using it for myself, I figured it might be something that other people would find useful, so I am going to talk about the inverse lerp function. Alright, so let's start out explaining how inverse lerp works, first by understanding why we would use it. So I have a function here that is attempting to have one object look at another object and follow it. And most of this stuff is explained in other videos that I've made, um, so I'm not going to go into it in too much detail. I recommend maybe taking a look at one of those videos first. But you can see here we are using the inverse lerp function. And the question being asked that this function is answering is, if I have this angle, how far between this angle and this angle is this angle? And the answer is going to be a number between 0 and 1. 0 being it's exactly this number or less, 1 being it's this number or more. And in between, it's exactly the percentage in the linear fashion, because this is a LERP function, L stands for linear, in a linear fashion, what percentage of the way between 10 and 180 is this angle? So that's all it's doing. This function is just trying to answer that question. And this 0 to 1 value is then used in later functions, like this lerp, not the inverse lerp, a regular lerp, which interpolates between one value and another using an interpolant, which is the result of the inverse lerp function. All right, so here we are in Unity, and I have a scene set up that will demonstrate exactly what's going on when we're doing this inverse LERP calculation. So here's my minimum of 10 and my maximum of 180. That's the values I used for the angles. And right now, let's say that the third value that was passed in for the angle is 95 degrees which is exactly halfway between 10 and 180. That would give you a value of 0.5 for the results of the inverse slurp function. And just to show you what happens as you change the angle, you can see how the value is increasing as I increase the angle. And it's interesting to see that once it gets to 180, value stays at 1, even if I keep going. So that's really handy. It's really interesting. It's a great way to figure out how to use it for an interpolant for a later LERP function. And so similarly, if I go backwards and I move it towards 10, value gets less and less and less until finally, once it reaches 10 and beyond, it stays at the value of 0. So it is not between 10 and 180 at this point. And another interesting way to look at this is what happens when you change the start or the end values. And if we leave the angle the same at 95, watch what happens when we change the start value. You'll see obviously the angle isn't changing, it's still 95, but you're interpolant value, your result of your inverse lerp function, gets lower and lower as I move in the minimum value closer to where I am. And so if I were to say start at 95, it would be at 0. And the same thing happens when you change the end value. So you can see the 95 gets closer and closer to the end until it finally crosses. So that's inverse LERP. Okay, and I also thought it would be interesting if I showed you what the inverse LERP function really does. So if we 
didn't have inverse slurp and we just wanted to do it ourselves. It's actually not that difficult at all. Um, there's two lines of code. Uh, we take the current value and we clamp it between the start and the end value. So clamp basically says if this value, current value, is less than start value, make it start value. If it's larger than end value, make it end value. Otherwise, leave it alone. So it, it basically keeps it between start and end. Once we have that clamped value, then we subtract it from the starting value, which gives us how far away it is from the start, and we divide that by the range, which is the end minus the start. And that gives you a percentage of how far this value is between the start and the end. So that's basically what the inverse slurp function is doing. It's just that Unity knows that this is something that is commonly used, and they just gave a function that they named appropriately that does this calculation uh, to make this common calculation a little bit easier to perform. So thanks again for watching. Please like this video if you like videos of this kind and you'd like me to do some more. And subscribe if you would like me to continue to make these kinds of videos. I have a lot of topics that I can cover. I just need to know if people are interested. So once again, thanks a lot and we'll see you on the next video.